Welcome back to the Faculty Factory Podcast. I'm Kim Skorupski. I'm the Associate Dean for Faculty Development in the Office of Faculty Development at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. And on today's snippet, I thought I'd run you through the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, MBTI for short. Most of you have probably heard about this, or hopefully many of you have. And for those of you who haven't, uh, it's a personality preference tool, one of the most widely used instruments throughout the world, developed by a mother-daughter team, Isabel Briggs Myers and her mom, Catherine Cook Briggs, based on Carl Jung's theory. So basically, there are four letters that you'll hear people talk about the Myers-Briggs. They're four preference pairs, if you will. And the first preference talks about your energy, where we get our energy. And this is usually the easiest one to figure out. You're either an extrovert or an introvert, or E for extrovert, I for introvert. Extroverts, think about it this way, like to talk it out, to think. And introverts like to think before they talk it out. So what fills up your balloon or what inflates your balloon or charges your battery? If you are an extrovert, being around a lot of people will inflate your balloon or charge your battery and give you energy. And on the contrary, if you're an introvert, being around a lot of people may deplete your battery and um, deflate your balloon. So where do you get your energy? That's the first um, preference pair. And it's, again, usually if you're, if you prefer extroversion, uh, people are, you're, you're outward, you speak to think because you like to put a lot of words out there and hope that something will make sense. Um, which is me. So I'm being a little bit uh, silly here, but extroverts are outward focused, people focused. Introverts are more reflective, inward, like privacy, prefer concentration. So the order for extroverts is do, think, do. And the order for the introverts is think, do, and think. So why does it matter about this kind of stuff anyway? Because, uh, you know, knowing ourselves is the beginning of all wisdom, right? That's what Aristotle said. So those of us who are going to be in leadership positions, not only is it important to know ourselves, but using then this knowledge of your personality preference, and then hopefully using it to gain insight on other people. So your trainees, your students, your colleagues, people in a meeting, how do they get their energy? What um, charges their battery up or what depletes their battery? Consider that before you do uh, anything in a classroom situation or in a meeting or in your department or your unit. Think about people who have different preferences, how they prefer to operate. So that's the first dichotomy, energy. The second one is, is how do we like to gather our information? You are either a, a sensor or an intuitor. Sensor, S for short, intuitor, Intuition, N for short, because the I's are used by the introverts. So you're an S or an N. That's the way we take in information. The sensors prefer facts and details. So all about specific. What can I see, taste, touch, feel, hear? All about the five senses. The intuitors are more abstract. They're more about that sixth sense, that kind of big picture um, concepts, patterns, figures, metaphors. You'll know someone's an intuitor if they speak in metaphors. They'll talk about, well, you know, it's kind of like a baseball game or life is like an orchestra or patient care is like a symphony. You've got the different people doing the different, the woods and the, and the winds and the different instruments. So people who talk in metaphors are tend to be intuitors. The sensors, again, uh, people who take in information, they want the spreadsheets. They want the details. They're very factual, concrete, sequential. And those who are more intuitive, they like that, the abstract ideas of what could be. And so they're, they're less uh, taken with spreadsheets. If you put a spreadsheet in front of an intuitor, their eyes will glaze over. And similarly, a sensor's eyes will glaze over and probably get an eye roll if you start talking about these abstract ideas, because they want to know, well, how are you going to do that? So that's the sensing and then an intuitor is the second um, dichotomy. The third one then is how do you make decisions? Once you have that information, how do you make your decisions? Are you a thinker or a feeler? Again, that's another pretty easy one. The thinker, like the Spock on Star Trek, very rational, objective, logical. The feelers are all very heart-based. Um, they're very much concerned with other people and personal. So again, thinkers are T's for thinkers, F for feelers. 
thinkers are very, tend to be viewed as being detached and cold, maybe critical. And the feelers, again, are very um, empathetic, merciful, praising. They're very, they're very uh, compassionate people. And again, this is pretty obvious. You can think of why you'd want different people on different teams who have these preference styles. Now, reminder here, uh, it's not that if you're a thinker, you can't be a feeler or vice versa. If you're a feeler, you can't think, obviously. We're talking about preferences. Where do you go by default? So, so far we've talked about you're either an extrovert or an introvert. What charges your battery? Where do you get inf- um, energy? You're, uh, again, extrovert, introvert. The second dichotomy is how do you like to get your information? Are you a sensor or an intuitor, an S or an N? Thirdly, how do you like to make decisions with your head or with your heart? You're a thinker or a feeler. And then the final uh, dichotomy is your outer world orientation. How do you operate in the world? You are either judging or perceiving, J or P. And judging does not mean the pejorative sense of the term. It's um, judgers or are people who are very organized. They like decisions. They like to wrap it up. They're all about closure, finishing the deal, closing the loop, putting a period at the end of the sentence. They want a plan. They want an agenda. They want a schedule. And the perceivers, they want to be open to spontaneity. They like options. They want to be very flexible. They like things to be open-ended. Um, the way we might, you know, think of folks in a being a little bit silly and humorous is the judges are the obsessive compulsive folks, the ones who are all, you know, the, the deadline, the deadline, and very, uh, again, structured and, and routinized, whereas the perceivers might be the procrastinators. They're the ones who wait to the last minute. Uh, because they don't want to be pinned in or pinned down to anything. They want to have um, the opportunity to explore different options. So again, now you've got your four types. You're an E or an I, an extrovert, an introvert. You're a sensor or an intuitor, an S or an N. You're a thinker or a feeler. You're a J or a P. And again, all this does not mean it's no right or wrong answer. It's they're just your preferences or what you do by gut instinct and we f- we all flex both ways. We can all do all things. I encourage you to Google the MBTI for the Myers Briggs Type Inventory. Learn more um, about yourself and how you operate under stress, and how you can um, leverage this information to again run your uh, meetings better, or work with people better, or in trainees and students, and just basically understand your be- yourself better. Again, Myers Briggs Type Indicator. That's what it is. The Myers Briggs Type Indicator. Thanks for tuning in to Faculty Factory Podcast. The mission of the Faculty Factory is to build and support a community of leaders in faculty development who share tools, resources, wisdom, and encouragement in service to our faculty members, schools, and institutions. We encourage you to go to facultyfactory.org to find out more, get in touch with me, ask me any questions. Maybe you want to be interviewed on the podcast. Thanks for tuning in to Faculty Factory Podcast. We'll see you next time. The Faculty Factory podcast and website is sponsored by the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine Office of Faculty. For more information, visit facultyfactory.org.